I'm I'm really excited to be here. Actually, this is my first time. I found your teachings on YouTube, and I haven't been able to um, get enough since. I really have three questions, but I'm just going to choose one for now. I'll just start with. I think the basics. So from what I've heard you talk about acquiring with the soul, you quiet the mind, you go within and you question and you either get a yes or a no. In my experience doing this, I've tried to decipher if the impulse of the soul is more than just a physical sensation, because I somewhat know that it's not going to be a thought process and it may not be an emotional thing. But sometimes I have like physical sensations when I ask my question. And I wonder if that is always the soul speaking or can the body also be influenced by the ego when I'm asking that question? It's a very important question actually because, you know, up until now in the history of spirituality, the soul has always been treated as something on the border of energy, but not quite undefinable, something we can't put our finger on actually. But the soul has a different space for every single individual. It's a different thing for every single individual. It's a different experience. And yet there's something very concrete about it. There's something central, there's something core to it. So if you ask the question and you receive a material impulse, that is what I say generally happens after a period of sadhana or practice. The question is, what if that impulse is indeed something that the body is doing as a response? And that question is relevant because we do have different areas of, say, layers of, or realms of consciousness. And those realms of consciousness range from the material, physical, to the emotional, from the emotional to the conceptual, from the conceptual to the transformative, creative realm of our beings, from the transformative, it goes even further into a uniform consciousness or a unity consciousness which enables us to actually connect with or be one with everything around. And then there are other layers of consciousness as well. So, if you're receiving an impulse, it will be something which is being translated by all these layers of consciousness. But from where is that translation coming? It's originating at the core of your being. The core of your being means the center, which is the soul's space the soul itself. And I say very clearly, the soul is a material thing. It is not a concept, it's a material thing. And so it sends this impulse as a guiding center to this whole being. And that impulse is either a yes or a no, and it's a physical thing, you can feel it. Whether it's composed of information coming from the genetics of the system, whether it's composed of information coming from outside the system, these are factors which we can't really ever know conceptually. It's a matter of experience. When I, for example, experience that impulse, I'm not in a position in that moment to even know where is that impulse coming from? I just know it's coming from the center and that there is something material to it. So, is it a protein being released by the cells of the body? Is that what's causing this material impulse? Is it... Is it a wave, a thought wave that's making that happen? Because a thought wave has a material base as well. The 
crucial thing here is to be very grateful actually that you're getting that impulse because many people need a lot of time, sometimes years of sadhana in order to reach that and a lot of the times people just don't believe that this is possible simply because they don't experience it so they try to create other scenarios for that historical explanation of the soul which doesn't belong to the future the future is not a future of religious dogma being imposed on, on an individual rather it is a future which is strictly experiential and strictly the individual's experience so in this case I would say with a great degree of surety that this is the soul that is impulsing you however it is important to be able to distinguish between that that loud and insisting and demanding voice of the ego and the soft and almost imperceptible sometimes even unclear impulse of the of the truth and as you go along and as you proceed on this journey of self realization the impulse of the soul becomes clearer and clearer that that experience becomes solid there's no doubt about that anyone who is actually practiced it would say that and of course there'll be those who say well how do we know it's not an imagination how do we know it's not something we are creating in our thoughts yes you will never know but isn't it an adventure on its own to be able to actually you know to be able to ask a question, to be able to even attempt to distinguish between the truth and the ego and to be able to discern that and then to be able to act from what you would consider to be the truth at least rather than to act out of what one calls instincts or the ego motivated actions or ego motivations so seen from that point of view it's a it's 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 an enormous thing actually to have that experience big and keep on that path keep on that road it's not going to take you into suffering it's going to take you into more let's say more joy than 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 suffering yes thank you um I, I feel like I could talk a lot, but I want to save time for other people. So thank you.